you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. Presented by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreach throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. Line up your desires and your plans, and you'll be at peace. I know the thoughts I think toward you, say, of the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. What does God have to say about it? So God has a great plan. Say that with me. God has a great plan, God has a great plan. For, my life. for my life. He has a plan to give me, a, to give me. A, future a future and a hope. Good plans for you. Plan. Think about that. Good plans for you. Get that inside of your mind. Good plans for you. Better than your plans. God's plan for your life. You're going to have to keep in mind that it has to be God's plan, not your plan. How do I figure out if it's God's plan or if it's my plan? Your plan will glorify you. His plan will glorify him. So a lot of times people want to do things because they're insecure. Y'all with me? Insecurity will make you do all kinds of crazy things. You know, you want, to, you want to do things that makes you appreciated by man. But God wants you to find out what he has for you and be content with that. Because your joy will come. Your joy will be full when you're at peace with yourself. You're one with yourself. So you're not, I'm not trying to be you. You ain't trying to be me. I ain't trying to do what the world does. I'm trying to do what God wants for me. And that's a full-time job. Everybody got that? So I don't have to compete. I don't have to look over here. If I'm running my race, I ain't got to be doing like this every second, trying to see how close you are. Because my race ain't against you. It's against myself. So the person I need to be looking at when I'm running, I need to be like looking down and, and thinking, are these feet going fast enough, Vonda? Am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I getting in the Word like I should? Am I spending time in the presence of God like I should? Girl, are you running your race? Are you running your race? I ain't got to worry about what you're doing. I can pray for you. I don't have to look to see how close you got to me when we ran, because I got my own path. Yeah. See, it's not like running when people step in front of another person, knock them down and all that. You got your own path. And God won't allow anything to obstruct your path that he hasn't allowed to come. So if somebody comes at you and comes against you, you go to God. You guys hear me? Yeah. If somebody comes against you, you go to God and say, Father, you see what they're doing? You take it to your father. And then you get back on your path and you keep running. And you run your race. And you run to win. But then you also run if it's not just about glorifying God alone, you want to, your, your gift should glorify God. Your calling, your purpose should glorify God. But it should not be a competition. I know y'all know this mentally, but I'm going to keep saying it. It should not be a competition. Because we all go, yeah, that's right. I, ain't, I know I, I ain't competing. And then as soon as you hear about anybody's success, you're mad. That's called competition. What did you think that was called? <laughs> what did you think that was when you can't even sleep at night because somebody got promoted over you? What was that called? You're not at peace. Why, where'd your peace go? Where'd it go? Because you're not running your race against you. You're running it against each other. And how's the body of Christ going to stand and fulfill what God has for us if we're running against each other? But I'm sad to say, 
That's probably our biggest problem is all the drama that goes on in the church. And it shouldn't be in the church. It's in the world, but it shouldn't be in the church. We should not be fighting each other. I'm just going to, you know, the Bible say law sometimes. Sometimes there's a say law in the Bible, and God doesn't even want you to keep moving. Just sit still and soak it in. And if you know that you are, are, have a divisive spirit, ask God to help you to overcome that. Be honest. And a lot of times it's some deep-rooted insecurity of your own. So go to God and say, Lord, oh, I got to deal with this thing because I want to really know how to glorify you and walk in the love of God. I really want to do that. And I want my life to lift up the name of Jesus, not lift up the name of me. And when that's straight in the body of Christ, y'all, it's it, the things that God can do with us. We can't even imagine what God could do with the church when the church lines up and becomes one with each other. So God wants us to, in order to, to get to that place where we're walking in his joy, we got to stop competing because you can't be in joy if you're in competition. Okay, now Jeremiah actually says, and I'll just, I'll just quote what it says basically. He talks about how he was called from the womb. And God didn't tell us that so we could just know, wow, Jeremiah was a cool dude. He got called from the womb. Guess what? We did too. We all were called from the womb. And God, it, it, when we were in our mother's womb, God was planning our days. And he was planning our lives. And some of the days keep going by not the way he planned it. Is that true? Can y'all all agree with me that some of your days you know it wasn't necessarily the way God would have done it? Okay, what do we do when we get off track? What do you do when you're driving and, and you're using your navigator and you get on the phone and you're like, Siri, I'm trying to get to such and such an address. And then Siri will start navigating and, and showing you routes that you can get to this particular place. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably talking at some point and you go right on past... <laughs> you go past the street, or you have something in your mind that you think Siri should have said. Because, see, Siri's trying to find the easiest way to get you there and the quickest way to get you there. But sometimes Siri will take you to some road that you ain't used to. And if it doesn't sound like something I'm used to, I go take my own road. I'm like, Siri, thank you, but I don't want to go that way. <laughs> so I might, I might say, nah, nah, I'm supposed to turn on such and such a street. Siri, you don't know what you're talking about because I ain't going that way. So then I'll go my way. Now, when I go my way, and I'm like, and I go fast too. So I just shot past something. And I get down there. Siri, I can imagine if Siri really was a real person, Siri would be like, what is she doing? I told her to turn on Pooby Street. Well, I ain't never heard of Pooby Street, and I ain't going on Pooby Street. Because sometimes Siri ain't perfect. Siri be done took you over a cliff somewhere. Don't y'all be up there putting all your trust in Siri. <laughs> so you on there and you send us up, but, but what does Siri do when you get off track? She reroutes you. And she navigates you back around. She tells you, um, go to such. Uh, but you know, if you could see her in real life, I mean, if, you, if she was a real person, she'd probably be throwing her hands up all day long. Like, where did they just, I told them to turn on, you know. And then she's like, all right, just go down there and make another left and make a U and go back. And, you know, so Siri will take you back to the right direction. Now, we do it all day long in our walk with the Lord. The Lord is like, wake up, my little pookie. I need you to spend at least 30 minutes in my presence today because of the things that you're getting ready to deal with today. You're going to need some time with me. And you go, oh, I'm so tired. I ain't had much sleep. Oh, God, I'm going to push this snooze button, and I'll get the last 10 minutes of it. And then next thing you look, you just snooze right on through. Now we got to go. We ain't got Siri. We ain't got no navigator. We out there, and we just running. We running this race. And God had all these little bumps in the road that he was going to take care of if we had spent that little time with him. 
that he told us to spend. But we got this. See, we got this. It's like I do this every day. I know how to do this. I know how to carry out my day. I got this. Then you get out there, and then something happens that you don't know what to do. Now you're sitting there like, Oh, you're sitting like, God, speak to me. Where are you? Speak. Don't we do that? Is it, is it just me? It's not just me. But see, God, God's instructions were put him first. Get that time with him. Even if you have to get up early, even if you have to just come before him for a few minutes, just then when you're in the car, you're laughing and talking. Let me call someone so child, I forgot to call them. Girl, what you been doing? And you ain't had no time with God. And see, that could be your time while you're driving. You're stuck in traffic. You're fussing the whole time. I can't stand morning traffic. <laughs> get on my nerves. When they going to get flying cars? I can't take this. And God is like, take this stuck time and use it to be in my presence. Stop fussing and enjoy the ride. Get in here and actually be thankful that ain't nobody bothering you right now. You're in the car by yourself, and you can talk to me about all kinds of things. Turn your phone off in case somebody hears you. And talk to God about everything you want to talk to him about. That's a great time. And people don't know you're talking to yourself. I mean, they don't know you're talking to God, they, or, or they won't think you're talking to yourself because everybody talks today. Everybody be putting stuff on their ears and their mouths. There was a time I used to pray and talk to the Lord in the car, but I'd be like, if somebody came by, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be quiet because you look crazy in those days. But today with the technology today, you look to totally normal. So have yourself a ball in the car. Be like, oh, Jesus, you're so funny. They think you're on the phone. They think you're on the phone. You're so funny. You're so crazy. And you laughing and talking to the Lord. People don't know. They don't know. Everybody crazy today anyway. Just join the rest of the world. <laughs> Y'all know it's true. This world getting crazy. Just join the rest of them and talk to yourself too. But talk to Jesus. You guys got what I'm saying? Yeah. Navigate your life, but put God first so you can find out where you're going. Stop getting lost all day long. Yeah. You spend the whole day fruitless because you was lost. And you spent the whole day trying to get back on track. And you could have accomplished this and accomplished that and accomplished this. And you spent the whole day turning the car back around, going back this way. Oh, Lord, that wasn't the way to go either. Then by the time you get there, whatever you went to get there for is over. I missed a whole wedding one time because I didn't know where I was going. I was in Virginia. I got all my kids ready because they were all in the wedding. The, the, the younger ones, Sandra, Sandra, Tamika, and Joey were in the wedding. I think it was Arliss's wedding. I'm in a hotel room. Nobody had given me any directions. So I didn't know exactly. And then the person that, I, when they sent me the directions, the person that sent me directions sent me wrong directions. So I done, I'm in the hotel getting all my kids ready to go be in this wedding. Come on, boo. Put your this on. Get your pants on. Get your, uh, let me iron this. Foot. Getting them all ready. Send them off. And then I started getting ready. And then I said, I don't even know the direction. So I, I called somebody and I had this, and they said, oh, we'll have so-and-so and so um, give you directions. That person was not the right person because they, they always do stuff like that. They sent me, if you were supposed to go right, they sent me left. They sent me all, and I was already late. So I'm flying, now I'm in Virginia. I went to Virginia for the wedding. And I get to the wedding and didn't make the wedding. So I'm flying and I drive fast. So I'm flying in the wrong direction because that's what they told me to do. So if you fly a long ways in the wrong direction, now you got a long ways to get back. Y'all ever do that? Like miles and miles going the wrong way? And then you got to turn around and you got to go back? So by the time I got to the wedding, everybody was walking out of the, out of the I think it was inside, outside. See, I don't even know because I wasn't at it. <laughs> I think they were inside and then the reception was outside. I think that's what it was. So when I pulled up, I pulled up 
And I'm like, and by then you're sweating, your makeup's messed up, your hair's flying, and, and everything is crazy. So by the time I got out, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They gave me the wrong direction. And I walk in, people walking out. And I was like, well, praise God. <laughs> at, least, at least my children got to be there, and they got to be in the wedding and everything. So, you know, I, they're not just, you know, you don't want to get depressed, so then you have to get something good out of it. Because God works everything together for the good, right? So then you're like, well, Lord, at least I was here to get them ready. Praise the Lord. But I missed that wedding, but praise God. But we miss out on a lot of things in life because we go the wrong direction. I was reading something the other day, and it said, from Joyce Meyer, it said, uh, she had a little section called Step Out and Find Out. Step Out and Find Out. And so... One of the things I want to bring up, if you want to walk in joy on the way, on this journey, you got to start stepping out to find out if you're going the right way. Trust that you have the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean you're not going to ever make a mistake. Sometimes you step out and you'll find out you're on the wrong path. But what happens if you never step out? What happens to people that stay safe? They don't go anywhere. It's like Peter was the one that stepped out on the water. Okay, Peter began to sink. Everybody talks about Peter sinking, but I'm thinking the mother turkeys ain't even ever, they never even experienced walking on water. Peter can at least say I was on it for a few minutes now. <laughs> I mean, Peter stepped out. Jesus, Jesus told him to come though. Don't go if he don't say come. <laughs> don't do it if he doesn't tell you to do it. But if it's something that you, you believe you have a prompting from the Holy Spirit, you are in the Word, you're spending time with God, and then you feel that the, the Lord is giving you an okay, then just ask him, Father, is this you? I don't want to, if it's not you, will you please be gracious enough to catch me if I'm wrong? Because God didn't say, Peter, you stepped out, you silly, I ain't tell you to do it, and now look at you sinking. I ought to just let you drown. Did he do that? No, he grabbed him. He, he brought him back to the boat. And he, you know, it was like, it, to me, it's like an illustration from God saying, there are going to be times you're going to step out. There are going to be times your faith will waver. There are going to be times that you're going to try to make these great stands for God, and then you're going to get a little scared. There are going to be times that you will be trying to overcome something, and then you're going to mess up. There are going to be times that you'll do it right, and then there are going to be times you're going to not do it right. Thank God for the blood. Thank him for the blood. Because, see, God is not interested in you proving to him what a wonderful, great person you are about him. See, a lot of people want to show God how good they are apart from God. It's like, God, I can do this. I got it. I got it. You ever see little kids? They be like, no, I can do this, and they can't do it. And they're like, no, I got it. It's like, no, there are some things they don't got. Amen. And there are things that we think we got and we don't got. Yeah. And even the things that we think we got, we don't got. Yeah. Because you can't even wake up the next morning apart from God. Yeah. You know, just that second ago when you went, <gasps> that was God. So God wants us to know that we're relying on him. He knows it, but he wants us to know it. Y'all understand? He wants us to know that we depend on him for everything. And then when you get in there and you get in his presence, he's big enough for you to overcome your fears and your concerns because you've been in the presence of God. So then you're like, okay, Lord, I've been in your presence. I've been with you. Now I'm going to go dodging to this day. And when I get out here and I run into something I can't handle, I won't freak out now. I won't have to freak out because I will know that you have me. But when you don't get in his presence, then your problems are like this. And the God that you didn't spend time with looks like this. And then you wonder why you have problems. I don't understand. I don't understand why things ain't working out for me. And it's like, because you're not investing in your time with him. Yeah. 
Amen. How many of y'all want to be in the joy of the Lord? <laughs> See, I know when, when I'm operating in the joy of the Lord, even when things are going crazy, there's one side of me that's still giggling. There's one part of me that's crying, and then there's another part that's like, but God, I know, I know you're in the middle of this, and there's something you're doing. But then there's another side, why are you letting this happen to me? You know, you look a little schizo, but that's okay. That's okay. That's the spirit and the soul going back and forth inside of you. You know, the spirit side is like, God got this. But none of us walk around like that all the time. How many of us just walk around like, God got this? I don't worry about nothing because I know God. No, 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 no. There are going to be times you're going to struggle. There are going to be times you're going to be like, God, where are you when I need you? You know, even Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was a point that God the Father had to turn his back on Jesus, and Jesus had to experience feeling forsaken. And he cried out to God about that. That's okay. We don't want to throw our humanity totally out the door. Because then that's when you have to start faking it. You have to fake joy. Because it's like, well, I'm supposed to look like I'm in the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Somebody says, how are you? Oh, just in the joy of the Lord. <laughs> and then you go in your room and you're crying. You see, you, there are some people you need to just say, you know what, I'm really having a hard time. Can you pray with me? Now, you may not tell everybody that because everybody is not really asking you how you are. Some people will say how you are. They don't want to know. And some people are not assigned to know. Do you guys know what I'm saying? There are certain ones that God may be like, I'm going to bring somebody your way today that you're going to be able to talk to about some of the things you're dealing with. But that doesn't mean God wants you to talk to everybody. My grandmother used to be like that until she got, got healed. She used to have bursitis. I ain't even quite sure what it is. I think it makes stuff ache, though. It was like an arthritis type thing. It's, it's, your joints are inflamed. Well, she used to, I just, you know, we're kids, so we, all we heard is, oh, my bursitis. And we were like, Nan, I'll do something with your bursitis. <laughs> so people, and, and, and my grandmother, you know, my grandparents were real, you know, they, they were good people, but they were just real and they were innocent, and they just didn't know that everybody doesn't really care about your bursitis. My grandmother thought when somebody asked, how are you, Miss Bennett? She, would, she thought they really wanted to know. We like, Nana, they don't want to know. <laughs> and so, so we heard her telling people a lot of times, oh, my bursitis, something, something, something. She started talking about her bursitis. Then she found out about healing, got healed. Then she started going to the churches, telling everybody about how God healed her of her bursitis. <laughs> My grandfather died, and my grandmother walked down the aisle. We all laughed. We said, look at her acting like she's Jacqueline Kennedy or somebody. <laughs> you know how Jackie Kennedy, when her husband died, you know she loved him, but she kept her poor poise, and she just, you know, she, she wasn't like, oh! <laughs> she didn't do all of that. She, she kept herself there. My grandmother kept it together like that. But she got healed of bursitis. My grandfather passed. She met her first love, married him. He passed. She was still living on. I said, bursitis ain't getting to you no more. Nope. You just having yourself a ball in your little old age. She went out feeling good. You know, I just remember just before she passed, I, it was the first time I saw her when she seemed fragile. And, and my grandmother had a way about her that she didn't even want you to know that she was getting fragile, you know. Because, you know, everybody thinks when you get old, you just don't care about stuff anymore, but you still care. I'm not old or nothing. I'm just trying to tell you what old people feel. <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about them people. <laughs> they, everybody wants their dignity. Y'all got what I'm saying? Yeah. Give people their dignity. I really think a part of love is to give people their dignity. Like, if I go to Watts and I'm going to help somebody and bless them in Watts, I don't need to treat them like a Watts person. You know what I mean? I don't need to act like somebody came down to help you people. You know? You treat people like people. That's why when certain people come into our midst at church and they got issues of some type or 
maybe, a, um, you know, mentally a little challenged or something, I don't treat them like that. I'd be like, hey, how you doing? And if they do something weird, I'd be like, stop that. What you doing? And don't even let them do it. Don't let them do it. And give them some dignity. Because sometimes when people express something that shows that I believe in you, they snap too, too. But when you're like, oh, there goes on so so again, and everybody avoids the person and all, all you're doing is feeding that image the devil's trying to put in them. You're feeding that image to that person. See, you're weird and nobody wants to talk to you. You have helped that person become like that. But see, God says that's being a respect of persons. If somebody comes into our assembly, we should love everybody that walks in this door. Don't be stupid, though. Y'all know that one church, somebody that came in the door and they had planned on shooting everybody up. And they went and shot up a group of the prayer people. You know, be to stay discerning doesn't mean be sitting up there like, ooh, we're just going to reach out. <laughs> we're going to reach out. Stay in the spirit. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Because God may be trying to tell you, um, this person, no, not right now. There's something that's going on. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW. One, three, five, seven. That is tape offer number T I T W one, three, five, seven. Hi, you know, the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word. That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in the Word. Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.